okay, I got a real problem here. I got to get sales. So I got to go hire a biz dev guy. And I said, what's your, how long is it going to take you? 18 months. So you're going to go out and spend 150,000 bucks on a guy that is not going to produce months for any, any kind of results for 18 months. And you need that money before now. I said, can you trust me and let's, let us work through this. So we did. And in nine months, he, his revenue went from twenty thousand to thirty-five. Um, sorry, twenty million to thirty-five million. He went from zero profitability to seven million dollars in profit, and then he could go hire the biz dev guy and and start working on that. So you know what's interesting? And, yeah, Rosemary. and this is, I mean it's fascinating the results it get. And my guess is, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, okay, is that number one, you're a woman. Number two, you're in a male-dominated field. That they're not going to go tell their buddies about you because number one, they don't want to admit they had a problem, and number two, they want to keep you as the best-kept secret. So for you to get the word out is probably one of the hardest things for you. Is that right? Yeah, and for both of those reasons that you're talking about, uh, who wants to admit that um, that a woman knows? more uh i know that sounds funny but sometimes guys have egos around that or they really don't want their competitors to know about this <laughs> so here's the number like that too yeah you, you know it's funny because you know like you um i'm a personal development junkie i don't know that you're a junkie but i am right you know i, yeah. I joking yeah. say i have um ald addictive learning disorder i'm always learning <laughs> and i love that um, me too <laughs> And, you know, and one of the things that I think would be extremely helpful for you is to create some case studies. They can be anonymous, but I think that's what's going to make the difference because, again, you know, we know that people don't take action unless they have one of three reasons. Seek pleasure, right? That's why we go on vacations to get massages, to um, get out of pain, right? That's why we get our root channels. But the, the real thing is fear of the future, and that's what you're – helping them with. You're helping them get their, their businesses healthy, fiscally, and running well. And I think the best way to do that is by sharing the success stories in a very generic way so that others can see themselves in those shoes. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you know what's really funny about that? Because I, and I agree, case studies are really um, important, and, and I try to do that uh, like, I, like that the, this example that I just gave you, but here's what's hilarious about this is, you, you know, so here's what I said, right? $20 million company, $7 million in profit. That's huge amount of money. They grew 40% in one year with no sales force, no sales happening. And people say that can't be real. You're making that up. And I'm not. And the reason I'm not is because the, what, what most CEOs uh, forget or, or discount is their staff go home and talk about their company. They do. And, and they, I agree. They actually, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say, I agree. And, you know, I think the thing that makes you a little different is your background as a CPA. You know, you don't just come with a leadership background, you come with a numbers background in addition yeah. to everything else. And, and I know that you used to run a Vistage group. I mean, you've been around this for a really long time. And the reality is that people just need to know what it is that you can do to help them so that you can shift the paradigm. I mean, isn't that really the biggest thing? It's a paradigm shift. Yeah, uh, I call it, it is. And, I, and what I say is there are um, three levers that you can, that you can pull uh, in, in an organization. Um, you can pull the sales lever, right? And that's what most CEOs, especially if they're under $10 million in revenue, go, well, of course I'm going to pull a sales lever. That's, that's the easiest, fastest way of going. And I, and, and I would argue that fact, uh, and I, like you said, I've got case studies to, to show that. 
The second uh, piece that you can look at is um, what I call operational excellence, and that is having what a, a very smooth running um, organization. And many small companies say, "Well, I can't, I, I can't take the time to to uh, get all my business processes in place uh, like you know the larger companies." And when I work with smaller companies. What I I don't make this mistake. I don't make the mistake of saying, well, you got to have 100% of 100% of the processes in place. I was a CPA at, at uh, KPMG, one of the big four accounting firms. Uh, let me tell you something. We're very process centric, and and part of the audit is is we test your your processes, right? So I understand all the processes. I know what all needs to go in there. But what we focus on on the companies that are under under 10 million are. What are your mission critical uh, areas? And let's get let's get those three four things handled, so that when you when you do want to flip the trigger of actually growing, that when you bring on new employees, that you're not scrambling to get them to understand. The third lever is the culture piece, right? That's what's going to actually have your organization start growing uh, like like crazy, and that's what happened with this twenty million dollar company. They got all their sales from their employees. Now, you might ask, well, why didn't it happen before? It didn't happen before is because all the employees said, oh, you know, the CEO's got it handled. Oh, they know what to do. We don't need to worry about that. It doesn't really matter, any of that. We had to go in and show the employees where it mattered and how to think about it and where to look for the additional sales, they're the ones that brought it all in. Now imagine if you can, if you, if you can grow 30% without adding overhead. That's a, yeah, that's extraordinary. So you have a couple mm-hmm. minutes left, and I know that you're writing a book. Do you want to just I give am. us a sneak peek and tell us um, when we can <laughs> expect to know about it and what the title is going to be? Because we have just a couple minutes, and I also want you to tell people how they can reach out to you if they think that they might be able to benefit. And I don't think that there's anybody that couldn't benefit from a conversation with you. But, you know, just kind of give a sneak peek to the book in the last few minutes. And also, how do we get in touch with you? So let me, uh, so I'm actually really excited um, about the book. Uh, And um, the title of the book is uh, Get Your Bold Back. Love it. And uh, how winning CEOs change their game in times of uncertainty. And in there, we are thanks. We are debunking several CEO myths. Uh, and uh, so that's all. We we are right now on track to be done by the end of the year. So uh, first quarter of next year, you should uh, you should see the book. And it's written in a very practical way, so that you can actually use things right now in, in, in your company rather than the theory of everything all the time because lots of people love, like to talk about theory. I love it. And I know yeah. you have a great co-author. We won't mention that. We'll, we'll let that be a surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who is, uh, who is actually awesome uh, and, and actually has big business experience too. So uh, how you can reach uh, me is um, rpato at thinkinstrategy.com, that is R, P as in Paul, A, E, T as in Tom, O, W, at Think In Strategy. And the reason we named that company that way is because we believe in insights and strategy coming together, which is where In Strategy came, and we want you to think that way, and we teach you that. My phone number is 760-519-4898. Thanks. Rosemary, you're awesome. Um, I'm so excited that I had a chance to actually interview you today and you know get to hear some of those amazing success stories. I think that when people listen to this, they're going to possibly have a paradigm shift and say, you know, maybe we don't need to hire that guy. Maybe we just need to look at the difference between leadership and management and have an outside source and Let's just take the fact that you're a woman out of it and just say, you know what? Maybe there's another perspective here. So I know we can also find you on LinkedIn, and um, that is probably one of the greatest places to put out content. 
and to put your case studies. Um, you know, the, the connections that you can make there are awesome. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today on Unleashing LinkedIn on Society Bites Radio. I'm Rhonda Schur, your host, and every month, every week, we bring you exciting guests who share new perspectives about business where you can learn, reach out to these resources, and shift your paradigm. If you're on LinkedIn and you're in the Witness Protection Program, reach out to me at unleashinglinkedin at gmail.com for a complimentary LinkedIn profile audit. If we haven't connected on LinkedIn yet, reach out to me. It's Rhonda L. Sure, easy to find. And remember, give recommendations to those people that have done a great job on LinkedIn. And if you are not LinkedIn, you just might be left out. Thanks, Rosemary, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Bye for now. Thank you. Thanks.